Hey YouTube, what is up? It's Ghost Squad 57 here, and today I'm going to be doing a gameplay and commentary of Project Black Sun for Linux. Um, like always, I would just like to mention that I am running this on Debian GNU slash Linux testing edition. Uh, you can get Project Black Sun on Dezora, if I'm pronouncing that right, for about three dollars I believe. Uh, I'll make sure to include a the link to the page you can buy it from in the description. Alright, well let's go ahead and start a new game. Now when you first start a new game you get the story. Basically uh, the main protagonist let's skip ahead. Basically the main protagonist was running or his daily jogging, blah 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 and he fell down kind of trap and now he's here yeah, so the story isn't very complex you know it's not Shakespeare <laughs> it's very straightforward so yeah the object of the game is to get out of this mine so yeah uh, Project Black Sun at first glance you'll notice the graphics are very Super Nintendo-y you know 16-bit error and uh, it looks very nice to me. I like it. Although that might put off some people, you know, depending on your taste. And uh, when you first play the game, it feels very much uh, like 16-bit platformers. It shares a lot in common with games like Castlevania and Metroid. Mostly Metroid, because the way the levels are laid out and the ways you just progress throughout the game. Like in Metroid, as you progress through the game, you'll get all these upgrades that allow you to do things like go into more of this little ball and plant bombs and just stuff like that, you know. And uh, Project Black Sun has upgrades as well. You can do things like slide, get more ammo, have more health, and just stuff like that. So it definitely progresses like a Metroid game. But the controls are very much like a uh, Castlevania game. If, if you've ever played a Castlevania game, you know, you get that stiffness you feel when you move and jump and stuff like that. It's definitely in this game, which will definitely put a lot of people, put off a lot of people if you've never played like a Metroid, or a, excuse me, a Castlevania platformer. It will take a while to get used to the controls of this game, but I've uh, played this game quite a bit actually. So I'm pretty much used to it. So yeah, much like cast, much like uh, Metroid, there are a lot of rooms you like. The game shows you these rooms, they tease you, but you just can't get in them. You know, you can try as hard as you can, but you know, got to come back here at a later point and go through all these doors. Metroid does that too, used to drive me crazy. Let's go in here. Now, uh, I, I, I kind of think the enemy design is a little lame because, uh, you know, snails and bats and all that stuff. I just found the kind of enemies to be a little lame. That's just my opinion, though. I don't think I'm actually supposed to go over here yet, so I'm just going to leave this one. Alright, trying to take the snail. Crap. Yeah, the layout, the monster layout can be pretty cheap sometimes. So you always got to be on your toes, you know, paying attention to where enemies are. Oh, I could die here. Oh, man, I already died. That's not good. All right, so yeah, when you die, you get sent back to this checkpoint. You get sent back to one of the little f angels, which is the checkpoints. I wasn't that far from the checkpoint, too. All right, so let's get back there. Yeah, luckily you, your main weapon's a gun. It would suck if you had something like a whip. It would just make the game a lot harder. There's two rats. Bat. Oh man, they didn't give me any ammo. I got two bullets left. So yeah, uh, higher left you can see I only have two bullets. Ugh. Yeah, when you kill enemies they'll drop ammo. If, if you're lucky, you know, they'll drop uh, ammo clips for your pistol. You can also get upgrades that allow you to hold more bullets. Hopefully I can find the 10 extra upgrades. That way I can hold 20 bullets instead of just 10. You know, more bullets, the better. Alright, so the enemy bat there just dropped a clip. 
And yeah, you, you, there is actually reloading in this game. Ooh, that was nice. So yeah, the game is, the game's, it's definitely cheap. Uh, really, this game is very much trial and error. You know, I've already played through a good bit of the game, so I know, like, what to expect, but if you're new to the game, you, you will get a lot of frustrating deaths just because of a lot of, uh, design choices and layout. Like, right here, you know, I got two zombies. Just gotta wait for them to go away and hope that I can kill them. Ooh, there we go. Yeah. Sometimes when you kill the zombies, their heads explode. It's pretty satisfying seeing that. But when they just fall over, it's like, oh, man. You know, disappointment. Also, earlier in the game, I picked up a grenade. Which is the first power-up you get. You throw, you can throw a grenade. By default, uh, you throw a grenade by pressing up in the arrow keys. It does a good bit of damage, but it's a good idea to save the grenades for the boss. The first level boss. Because if you have grenades, he is just way easier. And yeah, this area is what I'm... This is one of the areas I was talking about having, like, cheap layout. Like, if I would have jumped a second earlier, I would have actually landed on the snail, you know, without being able to really avoid it, because I couldn't see him. Yeah, the game is definitely cheap. But again, you know, trial and error. Once you get used to cheap areas, you can just blaze right through the game. So yeah, and I just ran a checkpoint. Hopefully I can get a little bit further without dying. This area is incredibly annoying. These jumps right here. Oh, ammo. Reload. Get up there. See, I really enjoyed this game, you know. And, and for three bucks, it's definitely worth the price, you know. And it runs fine. I never really ran into any errors. Although, I would recommend installing this game through Dissolve. If I'm pronouncing that right. Because, uh... I couldn't get the demo version to work properly. At least the one from the website. The only one I've gotten, the only version of this game I've been able to actually run was the Dezora version, so yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, gotta juke out the bats, bats a little bit. Yeah, that that's one of the more annoying things, too, is the falling pillars, because later in the game they're really high up to where they're sort of out of your uh, visibility and if you don't listen for you know the little rumble sound it makes you could die instantly. Alright. Well it only does one heart of damage, but you know what I mean. You could be at one heart and if you don't listen to that rumble you could die just not being able to pay attention. Oh, there's the bat. Oh crap, I don't wanna die. Uh gotcha. There's a checkpoint right here. Yeah, there we go. I, should, I don't have to go in that room yet. The room further above. Or down further, excuse me. There we go. Got you. Alright. Wait for the snail to cross. Never thought I'd say that before. Wait for the snail to cross. Oh, no. That was close. So yeah, the stiff controls definitely increase the uh, challenge of the game. Because you can't just easily avoid targets, you know what I mean? Just very sluggish. Life. Yeah, if you're in, if you're lucky enough, enemies will drop hearts when you kill them. And if you're if you're wondering why I haven't uh, killed any of the snails, it's because you actually can't. If you've played Metroid, you know the turtle enemies, which basically you just shoot them and they don't die. That's how the how they are too, the snails. In my opinion, it's kind of a lazy enemy design, you know, I mean, bats, snails, but I guess it's appropriate, you know, for being in a cave and all. We have these things, I don't even know what they're supposed to be. The trick to them is you gotta, uh, oh, no, oh, man, oh, this is a terrible position to be in. It's actually a good thing I died, so I don't have to walk all the way back. That was a horrible place. That was a horrible predicament I got myself in. So yeah, it's another example of how cheap this game can be, you know, because you make one minor jumping error, and now you're way back here, you know. So 
can be pretty annoying getting used to that aspect of the game. Being, it being cheap, that is. I don't really mind it because I'm used to playing games like Castlevania, you know, dying cheaply, but a lot of people would probably get frustrated at the game. Trying to speed run, trying to speed run it. Oh, never mind. I don't want to die. Yeah, you only start off with uh, two hearts, which is the equivalent to two hits. So yeah, and spikes do exactly two hearts of damage. So if you fall into spikes, you're dead. I th I think it's a bit unfair that you only start off with two hits. I think you should get three, but whatever. Yeah, I like road. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, I made it past that. Jeez. There's a bat over here, too. Oh, it's gonna come get me. Yeah, there's a zombie over here, and I need to go this way for a power up. See, see how his head exploded there? It's actually very fun. You can also use grenades to blow open these little squares there. You can reveal secrets. See if I can make this jump. Oh no! Oh man! Uh, damn it! I missed the jump, and I can't get back up there. Oh man! I'm gonna attempt it a second time. It take it waste way too much time having to run all the way back through the map and getting it. Damn shame. See, you see, that's what I mean about the falling pillars you can't that are sort of out of your peripheral vision. Although you can't see that if you look closely, it's just you're not used to looking up, you know, so chances are it's gonna hit you. Fines. Alright. Alright, at least I got this animal upgrade, that's nice. Uh, still, can't, still can't believe I missed that one ammo upgrade. I've never, like, I had that down packed. Ugh. See, so yeah, now I gotta run all the way through here just to get that, just to attempt to get that second uh, ammo upgrade. And you're going to need as much ammo upgrades as possible for the first level boss. Ah, got, ooh, grenade! Alright. A good bit more to go. Yeah, the, uh, this sounds pretty good too, the music, but uh, it, you kind of get tired of hearing like, the same track loop over and over again, but I don't know. It's not that bad. Speed running this, damn. Look at me go. Fire on my feet. Oh, ammo. Come on. Oh, more ammo. That's, oh, zombies ain't even over here. Oh, there you are. Looking fancy. Let's see here. Up, uh, up. Uh, there we go. I'm yeah. I'm used to jumping over past that pillar. It can be. That's definitely one of the more cheaper spots too. Because when I first played this game, I got hit by the zombies, and then I jumped up there, and uh, I didn't really react fast enough when the pillar fell and it killed me, so that can be very annoying. Life. Yeah, you can't move while you're reloading, which uh, can be annoying. So yeah, there's a lot of annoying things about Project Black Sun, mostly about it being cheap. But you can tolerate it all. It's a pretty enjoyable game. I mean, I've enjoyed my time. 
It's just not for people who get stressed out real easily, as this game can cause a lot of stress. Wife. Yay. Yep. Crap. Yeah, I can't access areas like this until I get the slide upgrade, which you get right before you fight the first level boss. It's definitely, like, the most useful power-up, at least that I've found so far. Because it, because it allows you to just go through areas a lot faster. Hopefully I can get it by the time my, uh, 4.30 minute mark, because that's usually when I like to end my videos. So hopefully I can get power-up before then and I can show you guys how it works. Alright. Aha! Try to speed run it. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's not speed run it. Let's dig it. Let's dig it nice and slow. Nice and steady. All right. Now I should be in the foggy area. Yeah, I'm in here. Alright. Stupid rat. That, I always forget about that rat. Like, usually when I uh, tried to get into that area, I'd always run into the rat. It would hit me and then I'd fall down and I'd have to start all over again. Glad I was able to remember him there. Alright. Haven't failed yet. I'm not even really gonna attempt to get the other 10 ammo upgrade because it was. Just I would just add so much more link to the video and competitiveness. I'm not even going to try to get it. Damn it, it's bugged under the ground. That sucks. Can't even pick it up. Let's kill a rat. Floats off screen. There we go. Him. And yeah, these guys are pretty easy to kill once you know their secret. Aw. Oh. That's irony right there. That's on the G of the heart. Yeah, the plants are one of the more sneaky enemies. Oh. Yeah, it's just weird bats go off screen, they seem to die. I'm not too sure what causes that, but whatever. Go this way. I can't remember what's in the store. I think it's an upgrade. Oh, it's plants. Hmm, I don't think I'm supposed to go this way yet. I can't remember, so I'll just go left. Try to fight the boss. Oh, a horrible time to die, jeez. Finally a heart, Jesus. Oh man, I just remembered this isn't the area I'm supposed to go to at all. Not to, I don't come here until I slide upgrade. Uh, I can't remember the layout of this game too well. Let's just go to the right side. Let's get about that stupid plant. Think there's another one? Nah, there's not. Oh, did not see him. This one is to get. There we go. It's a little weird. Should be coming up on the boss pretty soon. I think this is uh, it right here. Yep, this is where you fight the boss up there. This is where you get the slide upgrade I was talking about. So yeah, as you picked it up, you just crouch and then hit the jump button and you can slide. 
Sliding's very useful because it lets you get to a lot of secret areas, and you, you just move faster sliding than you do walking, if that makes any sense. And here's the area to fight the boss. Probably not, I'm probably not going to be able to kill him my first try, but give it a shot. Alright. See, the trick is to shoot him and then slide under him. And once he goes to the center to throw a grenade. I didn't do it there, but I really should have threw a grenade. Oh, I've already died. Yeah, he's very challenging, especially when you forget the pattern. Really, that's the trick to beating the boss. Just... Memorize his pattern, you'll be able to kill him pretty easily. Alright, second attempt. Alright, round two, bitch! Throw a grenade. Aha! Perfect. There we go. Now he's a lot easier because you can see the grenade took off about half of his life. But, oh, damn it. Damn it. That. That. Damn it. Alright. Third attempt. I'm getting him this time. Don't worry, guys. This has become personal. He will not beat me this time. I'm getting him. There's no debating now. Helps to have the third heart upgrade, but I cannot remember where it's at. I should probably go back and get it. Ah, oh, well. There we go. Okay, then he runs, and then he jumps. Alright, and there we go. Jesus. Yeah, he's pretty challenging. You don't know the pattern. Man. See, now I got the ruby key, and I can go unlock the doors we saw earlier in the game. Earlier in the game, excuse me. And that's where you get the, I believe that's where you get the second grenade upgrade and the, I want to say the third heart, but I'm not too sure. Anyway, guys, that is the end of my little gameplay and commentary of Project Black Sun for Linux. If you guys would like to see a second part, then just make sure to tell me so in the comments. Um, also, I am very open to feedback. If you dislike the video or like the video, please make sure to let me know why in the comments. Uh, GhostSquad57, signing out.